Now, we know that over the past few years, we have witnessed the profound impact of the pandemic, which has highlighted the significance of biotechnology in all of our lives. In our upcoming panel discussion, we'll delve into the topic of China's growth and innovation in the area of biotech, how biotech can prevent future pandemics. We are delighted to introduce our esteemed panelists, who are all experts in this field. Everyone, let's put our hands together and welcome them on stage. Mr. Michael Chen, co-founder and CEO of Great Bay Bio. Professor Jiwei Chen, chair professor at the University of Hong Kong, director HKU AIDS Institute. Also, let's welcome Mr. Fred Lee, the executive director of Gobi Partners GBA, who will moderate the discussion. Thank you so much, and I will hand it over to you, Fred. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. What a sh uh, shiny day. So biotech is a very important industry to us related to our health. So today we are very honored to invite two of our Alibaba AEF GBA fund investor company and also the top key opinion leader in the field to join us the panel discussion. So maybe first of all, let, let me give uh, some time for both of our prestigious guests to introduce themselves and also what their company doing and what kind of innovation that they are really running. So may I invite Professor Chen, Chen Chi Wei first? Hi everybody, my name is Zhu Wei Chen. Uh, I'm actually working at the University of Hong Kong as a chair professor for immunology and immunotherapy. For this particular function, actually, I, I joined uh, and also co-found Immunocure based at, at Science Park. And uh, so I also serve as the uh, chief uh, scientific advisor here. Thank you. May I invite Michael? Thank you, Fred. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm Michael Chen. I'm the CEO of Grippy Bio. Uh, our company is using AI technology in the biotech bioprocessing processing. processing. Uh, the goal of this, our company is trying to make bioprocessing faster and better. So within the last four years, we make uh, some improvement. So in the traditional process, you should take two years uh, to get the process done. Right now, we're using AI technology can get uh, six months to get things done. So the AI is getting very powerful in the biotechnology industry. Thank you. Thank you. And the first question maybe go to Michael. Uh, like biotech company like yours uh, in, in the China biotech sector. So how do you see China biotech sector contribute to the global healthcare and biotech development? What kind of co uh, innovation that we are pushing on in the global environment? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, innovation uh, actually is very important. Uh, so in the every country, in the every uh, society, innovation is always major driving force for the industry improvement, for the society improvement, for the history. So also this innovation is not a skill. It's not a government orders. This is a human nature. So no matter how, what kind of systems you have, what kind of society you have, what kind of a company you have, every people wants to have innovation, trying to improve the industry, trying to improve the technology. So it's number one. Number two, those innovation in the history help everybody for our technology improvement. So that with this te innovation technology can, in a biotechno biotechnology world, is very important. Particularly in the last few years, we have a lot of new technology to help uh, for the drug development, for the technology improvement. So regarding to the China biotech section, how can we involve to the world is very important. Number one, we have to use innovation mindset instead of me too or me better mindset. In the last few years, because of our habit, uh, company, in particular for the drug company, they always use me too, me better to reduce the risk. But it's not enough. Innovation to make your new product Make new technology is the only th way to make our biotech section, in particular in China, become a part of the world. So, in in order to regarding to the contribution to the biotechnology, is not trying to catch up the world. We have to think we are the part of the world. As long as you have this uh, global version vision, and then you can make the best of the product 
you can make best technology in the world so that your product can be used for all of the world. Yeah, then you can become the part of this uh, healthcare uh, industry in the world. Thank you, that's very important. The next question is, because all of the general public now, they know about what is efficacy. That means, uh, is the drug effective to people? And also a lot of people talk about personalized med medicine. So as the board member, scientific advisor, and also one of the founder in Immunocure, Professor Chen, can you share more, more about what you are doing to uh, for the ongoing initiative to pushing on that? Thank you for your question. Uh, actually, I fully agree with uh, what Michael just mentioned. The innovation is actually the most important for a new startup. So at Immunocure, we actually have two platforms of innovative technology. One is we call it the third generation nuclear assay-based DNA vaccine. So what this vaccine does actually is to elicit human-specific uh, CDA T cell. This is a type of cell very essential for kill cancer cell and also kill virus infected cell. So, so far like at Immunocure, we already have two clinical trials ongoing. One of the particular uh, trials is uh, dealing with the cure of HIV infection. And we know that in the past 40 years, there's no preventive vaccine or no cure for AIDS. But so far using this new technology, we are able to test in non-human primates, basically in monkeys, and so that the animal after the viral infection, they can survive for over six years without any antiviral treatment. So that is a major advancement in terms of this technology in induced protective immunity in the body. So, so far we also have uh, two human clinical phase one trial, one is for COVID as a booster vaccine, and then the other is for AIDS for a cure. So the second technology we are dealing with is we identify a new drug target, basically it's an antibody drug ta target to treat liver cancer. So this work actually we are just applying for the risk plus, the government funding, try to push this into clinical trial as quickly as possible. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, that's great. So good news to the audience. We have, we have now using immunology to trick out our immune system to tackle disease. This is very important point. So a lot of uh, startup founders also here. So may I seek some advice from Michael? As a China biotech startup like us, so how do you see um, when we go to US market, like offshore market, we see some track record of uh, facing challenges. So do you have, what was your advice on that? And secondly, do you think we should go in parallel like FDA approval or NMP approval? What's your view on this? Yeah, I, I think uh, some of you already heard about a lot of case studies. Uh, when the China biotech company, China, China pharmaceutical company went to US market, I got a lot of challenges. Uh, so if you want to go to the global market, start off the scratch of the project, we must have a global vision. We have to think about all the customer is global wise. It is Western customer, Europe customer, Asian market, uh, China market. So when you design this project, you have to start with a global vision. So right now, with my experience, most of the China company is still focusing on the China market first so that the quality wise to the standard wise is different from the global standard. So that they want to make money in the China market first, then if you have an extra effort, then go to uh, the US market. So in this way, it's very hard. It's also very challenging. So my suggestion is if you want to go to the global uh, vision with global market, we have to set up this design, the product quality, uh, in the world standard. So that once you go to the market, do not try to isolate the China market from the world for the global market. You use the best of the best product, best of the best technology, then you go to anywhere. You can go to China market, you can go to US market, you can go to Europe market. So global vision is always important for the company strategy, very important for the drug development, for the product development. 
I believe um, Professor Chen also has a lot of view on this because uh, he is also one of the warrior in the field of fighting future pandemic. And from our experience in developing the HIV vaccine, the COVID vaccine, how do you see uh, any tips for the audience on from like handling the future challenge? And also in terms of the, the global visions, what's, the, what's your view on that? Yeah, I think this is a very important question. Dealing future emerging infection is one of the major challenges for mankind, right? During the past years, we know that almost about a less than 10 years, one pandemic already hit the global level, right? So then for doing this, we have to build up the ecosystem which can facilitate the new, like a vaccine or antibody drug development from the discovery to the clinical use. We have to be able to shorten this time period. Uh, I'm using an example for this. For once the COVID pandemic started, we at the University of Hong Kong, we discovered two vaccines. One is this vaccine we, I just mentioned is still in uh, phase one trial. And in combination with a nasal vaccine, so far this combination is the only vaccine strategy can really prevent the SARS-CoV-2 mucosal transmission. But uh, due to the ecology system in Hong Kong was not available, I'm talking about you know, the manufacturer capacity in Hong Kong. So we have to wait in the long queue in order to have our vaccine produced for human use. This is called the GMP production. But so far in Hong Kong, we still do not have this. So back to your question, for the future, if we want to react very fast, you know, the vaccine we invented just within one month at the University of Hong Kong, but we wait for two years to get this vaccine made for human trial. So this is a huge delay and not allowed for future emerging infection. So my suggestion is really we need we, we really need to build such capacity in Hong Kong so that we can do innovation at the speed compatible in the, like, uh, in the whole world. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, we agree so much. And because future fan pandemic is also something related to every one of us here very much. So let's talk about the future. As the warrior in the field, we fight for the future pandemic. So the first one, maybe to Michael. How do you think our AI-enabled bioprocessing help the futures and also help fight the pandemic in the future? Uh, actually, for the national uh, pandemic outbreak, timing and the speed is very, very important and is also very sensitive. For example, the COVID-19, once this outbreak, everybody, and not in China, not in Hong Kong, actually all over the world wants to get the drug as quick as possible. So as you know, in the traditional process, the drug development is always time consuming, uh, labeling consuming work. So in order to break this kind of a bottleneck for the future, particularly for the uh, uh, national outbreak, we need to find a way, particularly it's an innovative way to break this traditional process, time consuming, resource consuming. So give an example. Uh, in the COVID-19, beside this mRNA technology, I think everybody understands that. There's another way trying to solve the problem is using neutralization antibody. So if you want to develop the neutralization of antibody, it usually take eight months, 13 months, get this done. Only to design the molecule, des uh, 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 required de uh, designed molecules. Now in the Grape Bio, we're using AI technology so that we just need one month can very quickly to get a, a molecule we want instead of like eight or nine months. So with this way, we can quickly get this done in the future uh, outbreak, number one. Number two, there's a process uh, because of the emergency of the process. So in the drug development, that's called tox manufacturing to test if this talks to the anim animals or human being. So with the pr all the tra traditional process, they used a mixture which is a very unpredictable and very unstable. But uh, since this uh, emergency of the national outbreak, they have to use that. But right now we have a new technology in the grape bio. We can make this mixture stable and even. 
So in the future, if it happening again, so we can make this a stable and uh, uniformed uh, cell culture media, uh, cell culture uh, mixture to get this done so that we can get a high quality product. So AI technology combined with uh, biotechnology can help this industry get drug faster and easier. That's very great. And for Professor Chen, you have a long journey from spin off a, com a research project from Hong Kong U to become a successful biotech company. Can you share more about this journey and what's the tips to our audience? Because a lot of people talk about uh, industry, university, research collaboration nowadays. As, a, as one of the pioneers in this field, can you share more about this journey and also the tips to the audience to get resources and the network? Thank, yeah, you. thank you for your question. I think uh, based on my personal experience, I feel this has to be a united effort you know, the researcher, industry people, and also government. Each will play a very essential role during the whole process. For us, like uh, working at the university level, we must have sufficient research funding, you know, to promote innovation, generating all the drug targets, novel vaccines. So this is very essential, but we need government's research support. But at the same time, the industry play a very important role to facilitate the translation from a bench in our university into the clinical trial. So without the industry's direct investment or participation for researcher like me, you know, it's extremely difficult because we have no sense about the high quality or large quantity product per manufacturer and also how to do all the process so that the product can be really used for human. So industry definitely also very, very essential. But I think the government still plays the most important role during the entire process. If the government is not willing to give resources at the beginning for us to do the research or support the joint effort between the researcher and the industry and the like a pandemic vaccine, this is not something like a single industry or research team can do. It's really need the government put out immediate big resources like US for the mRNA vaccine. If you look at the number, it's shocking, right? <laughs> US dollar like billions. But here in Hong Kong, we, we have got very few dollars you know, for initial pushing this effort. So my opinion is it has to be united and uh, have a sense of the urgency is very important. Otherwise, we will have no room in this whole world for competitive output, like a good vaccine or antibody drug or anything, right? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Professor Chen. So uh, we just took one audience questions, also t some tips to the government. Can, can I ask two prestigious guests to give uh, two quick tips, maybe, uh, to our government. What can we help to prevent future pandemic? Or what we can do more from the government side? Maybe, my, may I invite Michael? Uh, actually, it's a good question. It's very hard to answer. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, we have to deal with this uh, ahead of time. So we don't have to wait for when the breakout or, or emergency things come out then to figure out that's impossible. So everything have to start from scratch, start from basically just like the Professor Chen said, we need a lot of efforts from government for the basic research, for the uh, service, for the manufacturing, GMP manufacturing. So during the, we call safe time or during, uh, during the peace time, we put the efforts. So once everything's done in a quick way and the uh, right way, and uh, so if everything coming out, then we can easily to deal with that. So I think if the, from garden wise, you have to think ahead of time with a long vision, with a global vision, that's the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah, Professor Chen. I think uh, it's very important to get well prepared before the next pandemic to come. So this is really the major emphasis currently among our research teams. So in order to do so, we have to learn from the past experience. As I just mentioned, for example, in future, if there's another pandemic, we want the vaccine. But if we cannot make the vaccine by ourselves here in Hong Kong, even we have money to buy, who is willing to sell us as their priority? 
that's impossible, right? So that's what we, exactly we suffered at the beginning. We tried to purchase COVID-19 vaccine. And uh, we have money, but nobody willing to give it to you. So that's one of the lessons we learned. That's why I emphasize we build up the eco ecology here by setting up the complete process, most importantly, the GMP production facility in our region, not necessarily in Hong Kong, but at least in Great Bay Area, so that we can all benefit from it, right? So this is the lesson we learned. But in terms of what kind of pan pandemic will come, we have to do a lot of surveillance. And also, based on the data generated, we have to also build up the capacity. What my, Michael does is really the compass, company's technology may potentially shorten the entire process, the time, in terms of time. This is very crucial for our effort jointly in future to fight future pandemic. Thank you both, Professor Chen and Michael, for joining our panel. Let's give a, give a round of applause to our city hero who helped us to fight against the future pandemic. Thank you for joining the panel. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. And thank you very much, Fred, for being our moderator. That was a really great sharing. Thanks again to you all.